Hi, my name is Annie Lutkemeyer, and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine in the HIV AIDS Division at UCSF. And today I'm going to be speaking on behalf of World Medical School about HIV testing. HIV testing is the first critical step to identify people with HIV infection and engage them in care. Unfortunately, worldwide, many people with HIV don't know that they are infected. It's estimated that about 70% of people living with HIV in Sub-Saharan Africa are unaware of their infection. And in the United States, about 20% of people do not know about their HIV infection. Even when people are tested and learn that they have HIV infection, this diagnosis is often made after advanced immunosuppression has occurred, and this presents a missed opportunity to prevent illness and transmission. In resource-limited settings, HIV testing is recommended in any people with symptoms of HIV infection, including those who have TB, one of the most common opportunistic infections in HIV. All pregnant women and infants who are born to HIV-infected mothers should be tested for HIV. Targeted testing should be offered to those in a known discordant partnership, those who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, sex workers, and prisoners. It is also recommended that in a generalized epidemic with a high HIV prevalence that universal testing be offered in all medical settings. In the United States, it is now recommended by the CDC and the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force to screen all individuals aged 13 to 15 to age 65 years of age at least once, regardless of their perceived risk for HIV infection. Repeat testing should be offered for those at increased risk, including those who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, those with a known sexually transmitted disease, pregnant women, and those in discordant partnerships where one person has HIV infection and one partner does not have known HIV infection. It is recommended that this be offered as opt-out testing. In other words, HIV testing is routinely offered, and then the patient can decide whether or not to decline. In order to understand the performance of currently available HIV diagnostics, it's important to review the timing of HIV detection after infection. The first detectable marker in the serum of HIV infection is an HIV viral load, which becomes detectable as early as two weeks after infection. This can be detected using an HIV viral load assay or a P24 antigen assay. HIV antibody tests may be detected in the serum as early as three weeks, but potentially later depending on the type of HIV antibody assay that is used. I will review the types of HIV antibody assays in the subsequent slide. There are a number of different HIV antibody-based tests that are available, and they are often referred to by the generation in which they were developed. The first and second generation tests test for IgG only. And as you can see in the chart, these detect HIV infection at six to eight weeks after the time of initial infection. Third generation tests incorporate IgM as well as IgG, and therefore can be positive as early as three weeks after initial infection. The term fourth generation tests refers to tests that include a P24 antigen, which is associated with the HIV RNA, therefore allowing detection as early as two weeks after infection during the window in which the HIV antibody may not yet be positive. It's important to understand which antibody test is being used in your clinical practice setting so you can understand how early uh, HIV infection may be detected and what the limitations of the particular testing strategy that you have. While many HIV tests are performed on serum using a traditional blood draw, there are also finger stick or saliva-based tests that are available. These permit testing at home or in non-medical settings with limited medical expertise. The results may be available in as little as 20, mis 20 minutes. Most of these test for antibodies only, However, there are fourth-generation rapid tests that are becoming available, which detect both the P24 antigen and the HIV antibody. All initial HIV-positive antibody tests should be confirmed. Confirmation methods used will depend on the specific practice setting. They include a high-specificity antibody test, which can be a Western blot, an enzyme immunoassay, or an immunofluorescent assay. A second rapid test, and it is important to use a rapid test by a different manufacturer, or HIV RNA testing, which can include qualitative viral load testing, which simply indicates the presence or absence of HIV RNA, or quantitative HIV RNA testing, 
which is not approved in the U.S. for HIV diagnosis, uh, but frequently is used as a next step in staging HIV disease. Acute HIV infection can present diagnostic challenges. Acute HIV infection refers to the window after initial infection when the HIV antibody may be negative. Fourth generation tests with a P24 antigen can detect acute HIV infection during this period, which can range from two to six weeks after the initial infection. Studies have shown that these fourth generation tests can identify up to 80% of patients who have detectable HIV RNA in the serum, but do not have detectable HIV antibody using standard methods. Up to two-thirds of newly HIV-infected patients will have symptoms of acute HIV, which can include fever, rash, and lymphadenopathy in the first one to six weeks after infection. This is an opportunity for early diagnosis, linkage to care, and reduction of HIV transmission, so it is a particularly important time to recognize acute HIV infection if it is suspected and if there is access to diagnostics during this acute window. HIV RNA testing can also be used to identify acute HIV infection using either qualitative tests, which indicate the presence or absence of HIV, or a quantitative HIV RNA viral load test. There are special considerations for diagnosis of HIV in infants and children. Babies who are born to HIV-infected mothers may have persistent maternal antibody up to 18 months after the time of birth, regardless of the baby's HIV infection status. Therefore, virologic testing is required for the diagnosis of infant HIV in children who are less than 18 months of age. Virologic testing can include HIV DNA, RNA, or P24 antigen-based tests. If testing is not available in the clinical site where the infant is being tested, dried blood spot testing can be useful uh, as this testing can be sent to a central lab if rapid testing is not available. Testing is recommended within four to six weeks of life in order to take advantage of early antiretroviral initiation in infants who are infected. Infants who are HIV negative are recommended to be retested six weeks after the breastfeeding period is over, as breastfeeding represents another opportunity for maternal to child transmission of HIV infection. After the age of 18 months, antibody-based tests may be used with more confidence in children who have been exposed to HIV infection. There are special diagnostic considerations for individuals who may be infected with HIV-2. HIV-2 is primarily limited to Western Africa, but also should be considered in individuals who may have been infected from someone whose HIV infection came from West Africa. It's clinically relevant to distinguish HIV-2 from HIV-1, as you cannot treat HIV-2 with some of the first-line antiretroviral therapies, such as the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Most antibody-based third- and fourth-generation assays will detect HIV-2, but you may require additional confirmatory antibody testing to effectively distinguish HIV-1 from HIV-2. Importantly, many Western blot antibody tests will not be able to distinguish HIV-1 from HIV-2. In addition, many HIV RNA testing platforms may not reliably detect HIV-2. So if HIV-2 is suspected on the basis of an antibody test, additional considerations for viral load testing for HIV-2-specific uh, platforms is recommended. Once an HIV diagnosis is made, it's critical to provide counseling to newly, newly diagnosed patients, which includes the message that HIV is a treatable disease. It's important to share with these individuals strategies to reduce transmission, as well as strategies for disclosure and partner testing. Linkage of care is essential, with prioritization of prompt antiretroviral therapy start in pregnant or breastfeeding women, children under the age of five years old, and those who have an active opportunistic infection, including tuberculosis. Once they are linked to care, staging can be provided, which includes a CD4 cell count, as well as further evaluation for opportunistic infections and HIV complications. Additional resources and references to guide your work in HIV testing are included below. Thank you for your time.